This might be looking like one of our normal thrift hauls because it pretty much is. This is all the stuff that we haven't gotten finished between Saturday night and when we got to get it shipped out. Can we complete all the random things? I was going to say crap, but whatever. The random stuff from our garage and get it finished today so we can ship out what's sold and relist the things that we've finished. Stay tuned and find out. To start out, we're gonna separate out everything that already has a coat of paint and has started, and then we'll separate everything out into like needs repair and then different colors, so that way we can get started on the process. We'll probably have to spread out on our island and our dining room table to get this all done. All right, we're gonna start out with stuff that needs repair. Jamie pulled this apart during the live stream. It wasn't together very well. The shelf used to sit on here like this. You couldn't get to these top hooks, so we're gonna pull it apart. So we paid $5 and we're selling them for $7.95. You're not really up in the profit margin on this one very much, but $5, did $7.95. I pay $5 for that? You sure did. Well, maybe we'll keep the wood and no, do something No, I already cool with updated it. the listing. And they're just getting the hooks? They're just getting the hooks. Oh, you know what? I'm just saying. What if we just, Got rid of this thing. Oh, yeah, get rid of that top. Because then you could use the top of the hook. Hold on. Like a boss. All right, now I can raise the price. <laughs> not, not a super great design on this. All right, a little bit of glue, a couple of clamps. To buy the paint products you see used here today, you can visit jamierayvintage.com. So this one here, is the easiest fix. The screw in the bottom just needs tightened up. All right, this jewelry box is an easy repair. These little screws on here are holding this just fine, but I need to get this to stop from bending. So I th we'll test it, but I think this will be plenty strong. This Class C super glue works wonders. Just a little dab there, bring it together. We'll let that sit and dry, and then we'll test it, see how, uh, how tough it is, make sure it's gonna be a good repair. This candlestick looks awesome, right? Can't get the top to stay on. These, these nails that they use to put the top in, missed. So I'm just going to tap them out. And then we'll glue that. It sits down on there nice. So this one here, this glide just falls right on off and just needs a little glue on the slide here. Because the slide, as you can see, comes right off. And I think that's gonna be all that that needs on this one. It looks like this was just put on with some hot glue. So I'm just gonna warm it up. That scraped right on off of there. Easy. So this was a jar at the thrift store and they had set this on top. I don't think they were originally a set because this is, looks like it's for a different canister, but it's got this big chip out of it right here. So um, wood glue will work. You can use hot glue or epoxy, whatever you want. And then my favorite, just paper clay. Going right down over here. We'll got a lot extra, so we'll mold that around. And that will go away. We might have to sand it a little flush, but there we go. Now we're gonna get started painting all the things. One of my favorite colors to bring out in fall is Farm Fresh. It's like a dusty teal color, kind of friends in the apothecary family. I'm gonna start painting the inside of this, then we'll do the outside, and I'm just gonna assembly line and paint everything I want done this color. Weigh in if you think Farm Fresh is a fall color or not. Where does it fall in for you in your decor scheme? I mean, I'm not saying you can't use it year round. I'm just saying it's great for fall. It's like the fall friend of apothecary. <laughs> the fall friend is apothecary spring then? Yeah, well, it's, it's year round, let's be honest. You do tend to use it more in the spring though. Yeah, and then I use farm fresh in the fall. That's the way it is. Tested it out. My little handle glue job worked really well. It is strong. I already dropped it on the floor, didn't come apart. We're gonna say that that's a good test. I dropped it on the floor. 
Oh, you dropped my drawer too? That means it's been dropped twice. This is my trick to getting underneath stuff. You just paint underneath and then you swipe it across. And then you swipe it. We have these plates that we started to decoupage with some of our JRV paper. And we gotta finish them up, we gotta paint the backs. But I had a third plate and I thought I would give it this fun nautical theme. I'm thinking our ships at sea paper, which it's hard to tell on camera, it's a navy. It's a navy color, you know, fitting, right? I'm gonna use DIY crystal clear chandelier liquid patina. Once I get the top open, it's a nice thick decoupage medium transfer gel. Can be used as a sealer, it's more matte. It's really, uh, it's kind of thicker, so we prefer to use big top if we're just sealing it. And if we're just applying decoupage paper, we use the liquid patina. That's on there, we'll look at it in a sec. And it's gonna have a couple wrinkles because the plate's not flat. Paper clay is dry, just some 220 grit sandpaper. It's a little high in a couple spots. Just smoothing that out. Next up is Perry Gray. And I'm gonna paint in this lovely bookshelf. It's kind of cheesy looking, honestly. I just feel like if we give it one solid color and then come in with some stencils maybe, Give it some uniformity. We'll see. My super glue repair that I did on this uh, during the live stream is holding strong, so we're just gonna paint it. If you guys are seeing a theme, we usually only do one or two colors when we batch paint like this. Saves time switching out paints and colors and brushes and all that sort of stuff. And because we do it often with a bunch of different colors in our store, it doesn't look like everything's the same color because we mix it amongst other stuff. So I wished I had my paint sprayer out. I hate painting the inside. I also hate to get paint all over my hands. So I make sure I do the inside first so that I can get my least favorite part over and it kind of keeps my hands from getting paint all over them. What made you want to go this prairie gray over the top of this green? Well, right now it's kind of bleh, but with white wax, I feel like it's going to be really pretty. And so that's what I'm going for. Uh, and the white wax probably wouldn't have stuck very well on that slick metal. Oh yeah, white wax would not have stuck at all. Like it, it really holds well to the gray. And I didn't hate the color they were before. This isn't a huge change, but I really want to wax it to make all of this detail pop. So I went prairie gray. Also, that's what I had on my brush. All right, we're starting to get second coats on pieces, but this candlestick looks like an actual candle has been burned on it quite a bit. It's all waxy and discolored, so I'm gonna put some salvation solution on that. That's gonna act as a stain blocker, and then we'll be able to repaint this and not get that blotchiness, which probably won't go away with 20 coats of paint. We painted the wicker and it got a little bit wrinkly from the paint. I'm assuming it was fairly thin and, and not held down there tight. So I'm gonna pull it off because I don't like the wrinkly and I don't think we can fix it. And honestly, I don't know what the wicker's on top of here for anyway, other than like texture. Okay, that worked out okay. There's a couple little nails that weren't holding anything down anyway. Now that we've got base coats on everything, it's time to start stenciling the pieces that we're gonna stencil. This is from our JRV stencil collection. It's an old like cotton gin logo. Um, it says number 10 on here. And this is gonna look really great behind my hooks. I've got paint on my brush. I'm offloading it and then I'm just coming in and swirling and swirling. You may want to offload more onto the actual thing. No, it's pretty dry. You don't like my stenciling, Zim? You are always, you're always on the juicy side. <laughs> True, but I'm gonna distress it, it'll be fine. 
I'm using the one and a quarter because this is a big stencil and it takes forever if you use a little brush. All right. All right, pull see. it up. Let's see. Looks fine. You got lucky. I didn't get lucky. I'm talented. <laughs> there's the only place that there's a little bit of whatever is just because it's like not level there, but everything else looks great. Once it's distressed, it's going to be amazing, especially after I put the hooks on. I'm going to start at the top so I don't mess my numbers up. So these are the farmhouse mini letter set. It comes on a full sheet. They're not individual. We have a three inch set that's same font, but they're all individual stencils. So you can build your words or whatever, however you want. I like the sheet cause I don't lose them. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull this off upside down. I've got our more clock stencil here. It's a little bit bigger than the stencil. The center of the plate won't fit it. Let's see how accurate my eyeball is. Wish me luck. You could measure this out if you wanted to. I think it's gonna be cool. It's to that point in the day where I'm just about ready to be done. The last few steps are to wet distress the metal pieces, because I don't like to use a orbital on those, and then we're gonna white wax anything that didn't get spray sealed. So I just have a damp rag, and I just come across the metal, and especially if the metal has any kind of shine, you really can just get that paint right off of there. It gives it a little bit of detail when you wet distress it, and brings out the highs and the lows. Once the wet distress dries, then it'll be ready for white wax. Coming across with a DIY white wax. I want a heavy white wax, so I do not clear wax at first. This is gonna be the sealer and a little bit of uh, distress type finish all in one. Once I get this wax on here, I'll just hit it up and buff it off and we'll be good to go. Just wiping the excess wax off and you can see that it kind of polishes up that clay. It might be a little splotchy, but in 24 hours it all evens out and it's good to go. I'm not even sure where Zeb repaired this. That's how good you are, Zeb. Nice. Next. So the question today was, can we get all these things done today? And the answer is? Yes, we can. If you notice, if you watch the thrift haul, I fixed patisserie. We had the sample stencil and I just took the eye out where it was misspelled. No one else got one like that, just us, and it wasn't even open and I used it the other night. Some of the stuff is already sold and some of it is still listed with the original picture. So while Zeb's editing the video, I will get all of the pictures updated at jamierayvintage.com just in case you wanna buy anything. If you have your own pile of junk that you need to make over, you can also visit jamierayvintage.com to get the paint and products that we use today. If you like this video and you love thrifting and junk, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.